Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Species Spotlight series. This time it's time for the Rasses. The Rass family is large and diverse, with over 600 species in 81 genera, which are divided into 9 subgroups or tribes. They are typically small, most of them uh, less than 20 centimeters, 7.9 inches long. Although the largest, the humphead rats, can measure up to 2.5 meters, uh, that's around 8.2 feet. But in this video, I focus on the rats, which are popular in our reefing hobby. The fairy rats, Siri Labrus, at first. They are beautiful, peaceful, and uh, very active and smart. Um, often uh, these come with great personality as well. These are the fairy rasses. Generally they are hardy, but like most rasses genera, these are also prone to shipping stress. So long as they will be entering a suitable system with compatible tank mates, this isn't much of a concern with this genus, however. The Cerulabrus rasses take to prepared foods very easily and are ferocious eaters. If a specimen is not eating, health concerns are certainly justified. Uh, sexual uh, dyschromatism is high within the genus. Females are highly likely to transition to male if kept amongst other labrus of the same or different species. Uh, the genus does not, uh, does not need a sand bed as they will sleep within the rockwork in the mucus cocoon. The flesh arrest uh, or the paracelinus para para res uh, they are also the Flesher rats, a very active genus with several colorful species. In many ways, these are quite similar to the Cirillabrus genus, except they remain much smaller. The common name arises naturally from the male's behavior of fleshing, either or, uh, for this territorial display or courting, where the dorsal and anal fins are erected and blood rushes to the scales resulting in, the quite, uh, in quite the display of color and posture. This is a ge generally hardy genus, but like the others, is prone to shipping stress. However, like the Cerulabrus genus, this is not much, much concern if they are bound for an appropriate system. They are ferocious eaters and take to prepared foods easily. There is also quite the discernible uh, difference between male and females of the same species. Females are very hard to come by in the trade, as divers do not collect them uh, due to their dull coloration in contrast to the males. Species in this genus do not need a sand bed, as they will sleep within the rockwork in a mucus cocoon. The Pseudogelinus ras, or also the, uh, the lined rasses, such as the six line and the four line ras, um, but also includes species as the mystery ras. Once in an established system, they often become quite confrontational towards new additions and are outright incompatible with other races. For this reason, most should avoid the ge this genus. However, they do hold some merit in the, in the hobby as they can be a great addition in appropriate setting. This is a very hardy genus and will readily hunt for pots and pests throughout the system. Therefore, they are a great addition to frag tanks or other small systems which are not suited for the larger genera. As much of a, a bully as they generally are, they are also notorious for being shy when observers are around. Species in this genus do not need a sand bed as they will sleep within the rockwork in a mucus cocoon. The Helicurus rests. Uh, the Helicurus rasses uh, is a very large genus with a wide variety of species, over 75. Only some of these species are commonly offered in the trade. Some of them uh, consume inverts, but typically these are the species which exceed 7 inches in length as adults. This genus readily uh, accepts prepared foods and will also spend most of the uh, day searching for food amongst the rock, rock work and sand bed in a tank. They will consume pots and various pests. A set band is required for this genus, as they will bury at night or when frightened. The wet morella genus, or the possum rasses. Um, the possum rasses are 
very shy and docile genus. They can be a bit cryptic at times in a system. They do not often uh, exceed 3 inches and are one of the few genera well suited for a popular 30 inch gallon cube system. Um, usually they are very slow eaters and graze for paws all throughout the day. Pair them only with uh, appropriate tank mates as uh, what Morella species which is picked on will lead to its demise. Species in this genus do not need a sand bed, as they will sleep within the rock work in the mucus cocoon. Once feeding is over, she'll spend the rest of her day grazing the, the macropharyngogodon grasses, also the leopard grass. It's a very delicate genus, um, they are exceptionally prone to shipping and collection stress. Um, these are not for the inexperienced keeper. They can also be difficult to get onto prepared foods. Um, specimens for purchase should be well inspected for any trauma and ensure they are accept, uh, accepting prepared foods. Make sure they are uh, actually sw swallowing uh, prepared foods as often they will spit them back out before uh, this change uh, in the diet has been accepted. Even if a specimen is healthy and, uh, and eating well, the species in this gen genus easily stress uh, upon any move from other system to another. Uh, they are also quite prone to flukes and treatment with prasi uh, upon purchase is recommended. Once added to a new system, it is not uncommon for them to disappear in the sand bed for a week. Or even up to two. Let them be. You see them again in time if all goes well. Do not go dig them up. A sand bed is required uh, for the genus as they will bury at night or when frightened. So. Now we have covered the uh, most popular uh, genus of rasses, I want to talk about some important things. Rasses are known for jumping, so it is really important to put a lid on your reef tank. Some rasses are a bit more sensitive in the first period when you add them. They can burrow the cells, themselves uh, in the sand, uh, but also your water quality has to be good. So test your water regularly. The genera that uh, need sand to actually sleep in, it, sleep in um, need sand that's uh, suitable for them. So sand between uh, 2 to 4 millimeters uh, in grain size is suitable. Lastly, um, you need to check the individual uh, requirements of each species before you determine a specific one uh, is good for you. They all have their own requirements and notably, please make sure you house them in an appropriate size tank. So for a ras that's uh, at max uh, 3 to 4 inches, uh, a 50, 55 gallon or uh, 220 liters uh, tank size is uh, recommended. Uh, for a ras that can grow to up to uh, 7 inches, I would uh, recommend at least a 100 gallon uh, or more tank size. Um, or 400 liters and for a ras that gets bigger than 8 inches uh, I would totally recommend a uh, tank size for at least 125 gallons. Rasses are carnivorous so they need a meaty diet. Um, they eat also uh, pests like uh, flatworms, fermented snails, bristle worms and um, there is also a cleaner ras uh, who cleans other fishes from parasites. Um, but some rasses also eat, uh, eat shrimp and crabs, so please do your research when you want to add a ras. You can feed rasses uh, with different kinds of food, especially with frozen foods like mice uh, or uh, live foods as copepods. You can also feed them pellets or flake food, but uh, they have a small mouth, so please feed them the right size of grain. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Help me on the road to 1k subscribers. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!